Hello, this is the sixth video in a little mini series uh, I, I'm calling Probability Measure. The topic for this uh, video is conditional probability, and so let's jump right in. So, first of all, the definition um, we're, we're going to call this probability of B given A, it's, it's called a conditional probability of B given A. So we're going to let that this tuple, the sample space and the sigma field associated with it, be a measurable space. And um, we're going to let the event A be in the sigma field such that the probability of it is greater than zero. Then the set function from the sigma field to the real number line is defined like this. It's the probability of B given A is the probability of A intersect B divided by probability of A. And that's for every B in the sigma field or every event B in the sigma field, U. Okay. So um, theorem six, this uh, conditional probability, this set function is a probability measure. Okay. So here's a note though. To be a probability measure, it has to be part of a uh, measurable space. So it has to have a, a sample space and a sigma field associated with it in order to be a probability measure. So we're going to assume that, that, that we're in this measurable space here. So um, but we just need to show that it satisfies the three conditions of probability measure. And uh, the first one, if we let A and B be in the sigma field, then the uh, probability of this intersection is greater than or equal to zero by P1. And the probability of this event is greater than uh, zero. And that was by definition here. So that means since this is greater than zero and this is greater than greater than or equal to zero, greater than zero, then this has to be greater than or equal to zero. So it satisfies condition one. Uh, condition two, the probability of the sample space has to be one. So if we look at this probability, by definition it's this, and that intersection is, is A, and so this uh, is one. So it, it does satisfy condition number two. Now condition number three, we let the events AJ uh, be in this sigma field, okay? And they can be countable or uncountable and they have to be disjoint so then um, we look at this probability well by definition since it's a conditional probability it has to be by you know this intersect that divided by probability a well um, the the sigma notation is equivalent to union and intersection is distributive over union so we get this, and then um, these are disjoint sets. So this intersection, this union, is they're all disjoint sets. So you can take out the sum, which we get here. And then um, since there's no index here, we can take it into this sum, and we get this. But well, this is just you know the probability of a j given a summed from one to infinity. And so this does hold for disjoint sets. Okay, so here's a remark from earlier. In a mini series number three on sigma fields, page four, I talked about um, this sigma field, UA. So if we let uh, S and U be a measurable space, or just be measurable, that you can just say that, and if if the event A is in the sigma field, then we're going to define this new class called U of A such that it's the intersect, all the events or all the sets in the sigma field intersected with A. And this class is a sigma field. Okay. So why is that, why is this even relevant? Well, notice in the definition of of our conditional probability, we're doing we're taking uh, intersections, sets all all the uh, events or, or sets in the sigma field 
intersected with A. So really, and oh, and probability measure needs to be defined on a measurable space. And so really, this conditional probability is defined on this measurable space where A, this, the event A, or the set A, acts as the new sample space and then this is a sigma field associated with this. And so A acts as a sample space. So really, this conditional probability is, is, uh, is acting upon this measurable space, okay? And then, of course, you can argue that no, it's really the original, but there's a bijection between these two spaces. So it's really, it, it, they're the same, but the way you should think about probability is you're saying given A, so the event A happened. So that's our new sample space. And then this is the sigma field associated with our new sample space and conditional probability is acting upon that. Okay, so let's look at some theorems here. So the multiplicative theorem says that um, if we have events AJ in our sigma field, such that their uh, union from 1 to n minus 1 is positive, the probability of that event is positive, then this uh, uh, finite intersection can be written as the product of conditional probabilities. And this is the probability of n given events A1 intersect through AN, A n minus 1 conditioned on 1, A1 intersect all the way to N2, and da -da 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 -da, all the way to A1. Um, and this, this right here will help solve so many problems, so many probability type problems. And at the end of this mini-series, I'm going to do just random examples of all sorts of things. And this plays a major part. So the, the proof of this is we here we have this, this, in, this finite intersection. Well, you can break apart one of them, the AN, intersect with the, all these. Well, then this, um, you can write it as a, as a conditional probability times the, this event. And then, so this piece is that first one. Now we repeat the same thing we did with this, with this. Then you can break it down into, um, so this is that. So this one becomes this, conditional probability times that. And then, uh, then you can break this one down just like we did that. And you keep going until you end up with this formula. And I'm going to stop in the interest of time. Um, so now let's look at a definition. It's called a partition of our sample space. And specifically, it's a measurable partition. Um, so if we let AJ be in the sigma field, and it can be um, uh, countable or uncountable, infinite, or, or finite, such that they're all uh, disjoint, so there's no intersection between them, and that the union which notationally we can write either way, is we get the sample space back, okay? And as said, this can be countable or uncountable. Uh, that's called a partition. So if you have the real number line and you, and, you, and you break it up into intervals, that's a partition. Or, you know, it could be, you know, lots of different ways to do it. Um, so here, here's a note that... that a and A complement partition S, right? Because those are disjoint, and the union of those two, uh, you get back the sample space. So that's sort of a simple partition. Um, but let's uh, let's let oops, let's go down here. So let's let B, you know, any B or all B in the sigma field. Is, uh, is this, B, and that equals B intersect the sample space. But this sample space, we're assuming it can be partitioned. So this is the sample space intersect B, which you get B back. But then 
the, the summation is really union and intersection distributes over union. So you can take that into each one of those. So you have the this intersection. Okay. So B can be rewritten as this. So uh, this probability, which is which is this, okay, and and each of these AJs are disjoint, and so this creates a, a disjoint sets. And since the probability is sigma additive, you can pull out the summation. But then this intersection can be rewritten as the there's a conditional probability like this, okay. And this is this is for all uh, you know aj the probability of aj greater than zero. Um, so the reason we do that is um, I showed you that is because of the next theorem called Bayes' theorem, and uh, it's kind of the reverse of the partition. So here we take the probability of a, and then we're going to use knowledge of the, our partition to help us find the probability. And this is the opposite. Here we're taking the partition, but we have knowledge on b. Um, and finding this directly, well, let me let me back up a second. So Bayes' formula says that we have a partition, AJ, of our sample space, and the probability of each uh, individual partition is greater than zero. And if the probability of B is greater than zero, then this formula holds. And in many cases, this is really tough to find, but if you can rewrite it in terms of finding the probability of B given a, one of the partition elements, then this is often much, much easier to uh, uh, calculate. Okay, a quick little proof. We have our formula here, and then the conditional probability is written like this, but the intersection can be rewritten as the product of the conditional and times its uh, marginal, or the AJ, and this probability of B we just showed that it can be rewritten in terms of the sum of conditional probabilities over the partition, which is what this is, and that's what we wanted to show. All right, now um, one more page here. Now we don't <coughs> have to stop at one partition. We could have two partitions, say AI and, and BJ, they could be two partitions of S, and um, all it says is that the union, these BJs are disjoint, and the union of them, you get S back. These are disjoint, and the union of them, you get S back. Um, so some uh, notes on this, for each I AI, if we sum or union that over the B partition, all of them, we get AIJ back, and that's for each I. We can we can sort of union or uh, uh, sum over the partition B for each AI, and that also works for each uh, um, BJ. We can sum over the the partition AI and and get this back. And so this is like if you have an event B, and then you have this crazy partition AJ or AI and then you intersect it with BJ, you're going to get each of those individual pieces back of BJ, and you get your original back. That's what this is saying. Okay, so why is, um, when, and the next one is that if we intersect over all possible I and J of the, parti the two partitions, um, then this becomes a new partition. So this is one partition for the sample space, okay? And if these indexes, so the I and I prime and J and J prime are different, then the inter this intersection is the empty set, okay? So if we look at this partition and we sum over all I and J possibilities, we get S back. And, and how to show that is this is really a double sum but if this intersection, if we summed over the J's, you know, this is really just AI. So if we, we just get AI back, and then the sum over the AI's is a partition for S, and so we get S. So this new partition does 
partition S. Okay, and why is this important? It's because from this new the two partitions and and this new partition that's called a joint probability. So the probability A I intersect A J is called the joint probability of A I and, and B J. Um, and this is going to play a part when we start talking about random variables and distributions and and multivariate uh, random variables. Anyway, so that's a joint probability. Um, you can look at marginal probabilities over these two, um, over this intersection. So if we look at the probability of AI, and then and then when we go to here and we intersect AI with the whole sample space, we just get AI back. But if we look at this sample space and and replace it with this partition over B, so this is the entire sample space intersect with AI, we get AI back. But intersection is distributive over union, so you can take that in. Right, and so these are little disjoint sets, and the probability measure is sigma additive, so that sum can come out front. And then this right here can be rewritten as a uh, as a as a conditional probability. Okay, so really the the formula really you skip these, but I was just showing you proof or background how to get these two formulas. And again, this comes in so handy over probability or um, if you want to find this event, sometimes it's helpful to sum over all possibilities of another partition. Um, and then, then it becomes helpful to write it as a conditional probability. Um, and so you can do that with B too. You can sum over all possible AIJ or AIs and then that is the this probably this event, and you can rewrite it as a conditional probability. This is so handy. When I was doing, uh, I have a series on actuarial exams, and there's always probability, and I am constantly using this joint probability and marginal probabilities to calculate, you know, the solution to these problems. Um, but anyway, that's all I have for today. My time's up. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like it. Subscribe so you don't miss the next one. The next video, I am will either talk about independence or uh, random variables and their distributions. Okay, and if I if I do independence first, then I'm gonna have to do another one after I talk about random variables. So because they're sort of two uh, themes or thoughts in independence that I want to talk about. But anyway, more on that later. Uh, uh, that's it. Thanks. Bye.